the truck today, doing a little bit of work on the. Um, I'm gonna try to, to, you know, work on the W9 as well over there. But uh, I finally got the other, uh, the auxiliary shifter mended, so I'm gonna uh, install that real quick and go back to that setup, which. I think that was a great time. I'll actually go through a step by step of what you need to do if this is something that you want to do for your own uh, truck. So, as far as uh, what you need to do is, I mean, you're going to start with a, with a setup similar to this, if not with just the uh, you know the stock knob without the the ball adapter which is pretty easy but got two screws to take this cover off get access to the uh, air uh, airlines there's a screw here in the front and there's a screw here in the back back in here just so I don't lose them. And then this thing I'm actually gonna save. Obviously I need the knob again but I'm gonna save for the other truck. Because I don't think I'm gonna do to that to what I'm doing with this as far as the uh, you know, twin stick is concerned. Trusty knife here since I don't have my uh, pliers. I'll just cut the zip tie up top. Now, you got access to the airlines. Now, I'm sure there's a way of, of doing these properly as far as finding out what airline is what. I don't know what that is. I know they have writings on here and I'm sure there's a schematic of some sort. But what I typically do to find out, you know, if this is, you know, for the high low range selector or the splitter, you know, obviously make sure there's air in the system and then just so that that line's got air on it. I'm gonna flip it up to the high side. And the air stops, so I know that's going to be for my high-low range selector, and that's going to be for the high. So this one here, most likely, is going to be for the low. So if I flip this down, I should have air hissing out of here, because obviously there's nothing there. And I do, so there's going to be for my high-low range selector. Now, just. Tape these together, that way you know what's what. Or mark them somehow that you will remember them how to do it. I just, you know, a little bit of masking tape. Um, you leave this out, it'll drain it fast enough. But obviously, this being a 13 speed, it's only got two more, so these two would be for the uh, high and low on the spirit. Trust the old adjustable wrench. Loosen it up. And the nub comes off.
I kind of got everything prepped here. And as far as the auxiliary shifter itself, from uh, four states, it's, I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, so what I did to it is I matched um, the, the, the rubber bushing that would go over top of this. Like over, so I matched the rubber bushing that would go over top of this, like on the interior, and I matched the holes. And I just put some... Uh, Not rivets or rivet nuts or whatever you guys have heard of called. Uh, just to make the installation a lot easier. But I did put a bend on this of how I wanted to kind of sit in the truck. And I'll go up underneath the truck real quick and I'll show you guys all those connections. And I hope you can hear me okay today. Things first, there, boys and girls. When you come to curl up underneath one of these things, they get a pair of coveralls will save you a lot of headache. These are like a, a thinner material that you could, you know, kind of wear, like even in the summertime. I don't Like an emergency, like the 110 use painters ones that you could buy from Home Depot. But if you're pulling like under the truck, under the truck, good chance that those might rip, and they do rip a lot easier. So, but these ones are robust. Gloves. So when I work on something like this, and I gotta work on the you know like on dirty stuff in the interior right after i just put on two pair of gloves so when i come up if it's something that i don't have a whole lot of time to dick around with instead of taking them off and having to change the gloves especially you know like you know you wear gloves your hands get sweaty it's kind of a pain in the ass to wear other gloves these are like uh they have like the powder in them so they're a little bit easier but still when your hands are sweaty they kind of pain in the ass and i wear doubles when i come up from underneath with dirty greasy whatever gloves and i gotta go inside real quick to do something else just rip a pair off and and off you go right down there so yeah, maybe i'm not as stupid as i look but maybe i am who knows all right let's get the hell up underneath there i'm not looking forward to this part but hey gotta do what we gotta do so there's a hole from up underneath these two are gonna go to that which would be for the splitter and then these two the ones that are marked are gonna be the ones that are gonna go um, right over there if you can see those two little red lines going up that's where I have them going through the floorboard but I left them like that so when I rehooked it up all I gotta do is just use some uh, Quick connectors or extenders or whatever you want to call them. Alright guys, so I just put a just a towel over the seat that way, you know, all this dirty stuff I'm not getting this thing dirty so here's this thing. And it's gonna go up just like this. And there's the holes on the floor there um, that match up with everything else. But what you do need to do first though is get that boot over here because you're gonna put the screws through that. So there we go. Go. 
try to start them all by hand or at least a few first ones because um, you don't want to cross thread anything especially at this point and you can feel when they start going in there you know what I mean and now I'm letting this go it's pretty much holed up by itself so I'm not going to tighten it all the way I'm just going to leave it loose just like that just so I can start all of them There she goes. I just tied them down real quick. And uh, just gotta go back up underneath there to make the rest of the connections. All right guys, so I let the uh, the truck air up. Well, the, the thing with these valves is when you put them on there, I personally don't know which direction they go because I haven't looked at a schematic or anything like that but what you can do is when you hook them up if you for whatever reason hook them up wrong so now this is the high low range if I put it on high it's not supposed to leak but watch so when I put it on high like that and it leaks all I gotta do is just swap the two for the high low range and then once I do that I can go and test out the uh, um, the high lows uh, on the split side so there where the connections are, pretty easy to get to. So let me just swap them out real quick. All right, so let's go test them out. So it's on low, high, low again, high. When it's on high, and the splitter is not leaking, so we're good, I mean, that's it guys, it's a pretty simple thing to do, it's really not that big a deal. So now I just got to get myself out of this crap. And uh, I'm just going to tidy up the lines there real quick, I can't really film and do it at the same time, there's really no good place to put the camera at. But I got to get in there and make sure I zip tie uh, everything so it's, you know, nice and neat. All right, ladies and gents, we are going to give this thing a little loving too today. Yeah, I'm just going to change door locks real quick. Got some new ones. I've got a new lock kit. Because I think that's what's wrong and that's why they're not opening up. So first things first, these little tabs right here. Be a little gentle with these because I mean they're all like especially if you have an old truck like this one is. Like especially if it's something they gotta reuse again. Now this particular one, don't really care, it's gonna come in with with the new stuff there anyway, but just if you gotta reuse stuff, be mindful of it. It's old, it's brittle, and it's probably gonna go to shit. comes the handle yeah so this is the lock itself and that's what was I think going on with with the other one that's why they wouldn't open 
and real easy but so you don't really need anything out of this um, like even the gasket and all that you just reuse the other one or the new one has a brand new gasket with it uh, but it's just a good idea to give the outside a little bit of cleaning and then like on my case a couple of the washers fell in whoops which really is not that big deal because it comes with new ones anyway but what you don't want is them rattling in there and driving you nuts that would drive me nuts and i already am nuts unless of course these don't have um, new nuts and washers in their case then you need them and this is left so this thing has got a, a right and a left on here so I'm assuming this is a, a universal for either way so I'm gonna have to see how I have to flip that so best thing to do is here's how this was sitting and here's how this is gonna sit put them like that side by side and make sure everything is good now so to install a new lock you need to just pull this tab here and you'll have to, to pull that regardless of whether you you know reuse the um, the old one or put a new one if you gotta reuse the old one and I'll just remove it here real quick for you guys just so you can see it you take that tab out right there Let's see if I can So once that comes out, the lock itself comes out. And the lock, you cannot put it backwards. This, if you try to put it on backwards, it won't go because it's meant to go only in one specific way. And that's that. And then you just put the retainer clip back on. Put the retainer clip on just like that and then you're going to take that new piece here and you're going to install it just like the other one was Not so got to grab it just like this slide that over first one by one put the washers and the nuts on there left is to put the steps back on here
looks like it went up and over and the tire kind of caught it and it I mean took that to shreds so I only got another pair the truck is air out is aired out uh, that's why they're sitting so low but when the truck gets aired out they'll have a decent amount of clearance in there only thing really I have to do on the inside is I gotta change uh, the speedometer and the tachometer um, lights real quick I can put the set of spares that I had because they kept acting up when I was on the road last week they're a little too blue I ordered another pair let's see if they're any better then I gotta wrap the sticks real quick in bandanas and you guys will see why when I show you how the sticks are they're in pretty rough shape I don't know how the weather is where you guys are at but it is freezing out here in Michigan today uh, the sun came out a little bit earlier it wasn't that bad but now it's whew, it's pretty bad so so here's the, the sh shifters they're pretty scratched they're pretty messed up and then this one would have been the original one i had to heat up and and bend to what i wanted so you know that that took its to own toll so that's why i wrap them in uh in bandanas and i think it looks you know it kind of matches with the rest of the purple in the in the truck or whatever so So this is what I got. Supposed to be pink, which I guess is better than you know blue. I guess it matches the rest of them a little bit better, but we'll see.
I'll give you a quick 411 here real quick on how I do the uh, how I wrap the bandanas around the shifter so this is what you end up with so here's how I do it maybe somebody's got a better way actually but this my way actually kicks my ass a little bit too so I actually leave the bandana folded so I leave the bandana folded in half and I use a little bit of tape um, just to help me out here and I'll show you guys here why in a minute but I leave this extra slack at the ends here and what that is is once I put everything in this is where I zip tie it and then try to fold that over the zip tie so you can't really see the zip tie take this whatever desired length you want on the bottom and just tack it a little bit Let's see if you need to readjust it in my case I got to readjust it up just a little bit and then just tape it next you're just going to take this and just wrap it around kind of gently especially the first time you don't want it too tight in the beginning and then you can start pulling it tighter as you you start wrapping it more and more So, take a zip tie, put it towards the top here, Make sure the, the bulk of the zip tie make sure the bulk of the zip tie ends up forward here. And then just take this and wrap it over on itself. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it can be done. And all you're trying to do is just cover up so all you're trying to do guys is just to cover up the zip tie right there like you could tell clearly there's something there obviously i would know and you guys would know that you know seeing it but to the naked eye unless they were really really paying attention they couldn't really tell and you do the same thing with the bottom And that is it, you guys. This one, 
I'm going to leave exposed like that a little bit. Um, I tried putting one on there. And if you leave it short, it wraps around too much. It looks like crap. If you cut it, your strings all, you know, they come all over out of it. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Now I just need to remember <laughs> that it's back to this setup and not the uh, the conventional setup. So it's probably going to you know, take a couple of tries of me just making, you know, messing it up. But, you know, it's it's no different than anything else once you do it a couple of times it's really not a big deal plus this thing i mean still a a splitter is just instead of it being a, a little button it's just a long ass lever so i like it i know some people don't some people don't some people do but i guess what matters at the end is what you know what it makes you feel like do you like it or not you know can't do things just to make everybody else happy that's how i look at it um, I'm gonna call my wife here. Maybe she can meet me at the yard because I'm over here at my buddy's shop uh, I Gotta drive the truck to the yard, but I had I gotta have somebody drop me off back here. So I'm gonna call her real quick So what I ended up doing guys is I did uh, end up turning this 180 so the high side at least on the splitter it's with the lever back and not with the lever forward. It just seemed like, you know, I wanted for a quick test drive earlier. And it seemed like it was just too much, you know, effort when it was forward. And it seemed like it was, you know, vibrating too much just the, the position of the lever. Where when it was back, it's essentially straight up. It seemed to be shaking a lot less. Especially since I'll be on that position for obviously longer amounts of time cruising at highway speeds I figured I'd go with this kind of setup uh, Take me a little bit to get used to it but took a syringe and drained all of my energy out but just got to the yard waiting on my wife go home take a hot shower and rest up a little bit but hopefully uh, everything goes good as far as you know me feeling uh, better tomorrow and i'll head out but as always thank you so much for your support uh, don't forget like subscribe if you're not a subscriber and you like what you see comment try to make fun of me Whatever makes you happy, I guess. Peace.